Anxiety is a common emotional experience characterized by feelings of tension, worry, and physical changes like increased blood pressure. It's a natural response to stress, serving as a warning system to alert us of potential threats. However, when anxiety becomes chronic or overwhelming, it can hamper our daily life. Understanding anxiety is the first step towards managing it. It manifests in various forms such as generalized anxiety disorder, panic disorder, social anxiety, and specific phobias. Each type has its unique features, but all revolve around excessive worry or fear. The impact of anxiety on one's life can be profound. It can hinder relationships, work performance, or overall well-being. Moreover, chronic anxiety can lead to other mental health issues like depression. Recognizing the effects of anxiety and seeking appropriate methods to manage it is crucial for improving the quality of life. Here, I'll provide and discuss practical techniques to manage anxiety, enhancing one's ability to cope with stress and lead a fulfilling life. Along with providing therapeutic tools, I will also discuss why these coping skills work and how to implement them into your daily life. Any coping skill, whether it be for anxiety or any other condition, must be practiced regularly to ensure it has a noticeable change in your mood and demeanor. So the first technique we're going to discuss is a CBT skill called cognitive restructuring. So start with the overview. Cognitive restructuring is a core technique within cognitive behavioral therapy, more commonly known as CBT, aimed at identifying and challenging maladaptive thoughts and beliefs. It's based on the understanding that one's thoughts significantly influence our feelings and behaviors. By changing negative thought patterns, one can alter emotional responses and behavioral actions, creating a positive shift in one's experience of anxiety. This technique empowers individuals to actively engage with their thought processes, promoting a deeper awareness and understanding of how certain thought patterns contribute to anxiety. It's a skill that fosters resilience and a proactive approach towards managing anxiety, offering a pathway towards enhanced mental well-being and a more balanced outlook on life. So what does it do? Cognitive, cognitive restructuring helps to alleviate anxiety by transforming negative thought patterns into more positive, realistic ones. It's a method for identifying thoughts that trigger anxiety and reframing them, which in turn, changes the emotional responses to a situation. By doing so, it reduces the intensity and frequency of anxious feelings, paving the way for a calmer mind and better coping strategy. So how does this work? The process begins with identifying the negative or distorted thoughts that contribute to anxiety. Once identified, these thoughts are a challenge for their accuracy and helpfulness. This is followed by the creation of new, balanced thoughts that promote a more positive, emotional response. Over time, and with practice, the mind learns to automatically challenge and reframe negative thoughts, and thereby reduce anxiety. So let's get into the implementation of this. So first up, we identify the negative thoughts. So begin by noting down your negative thoughts whenever they occur, especially in the anxiety-provoking situations. So. With generalized anxiety, this might be, you know, whenever you feel your chest tightening up or social anxiety whenever you're around people. Whenever you're noticing those anxiety or negative thoughts coming up, journal them down and notice them. Next up, we want to challenge those negative thoughts. So for each negative thought, examine the evidence for and against it and challenge the validity of that evidence. We then want to develop balanced thoughts. So create more balanced, positive replacements for your negative thoughts. So this doesn't mean that you need exactly positive thoughts, but maybe neutral ones could help be helpful as well. So instead of saying that you're the best, maybe just you're okay. We want to be balanced here. We want to say instead of being the worst or that you can't do anything, just, you know, I'm a capable person. Maybe I didn't do my best here, or maybe I don't know what I'm doing right now, but I'll figure this out. So we want to be more balanced in our thinking. And of course, we want to practice regularly. So consistently practice these steps to reinforce the new balanced thought patterns. So an exercise here is engage in daily practice of cognitive restructuring by keeping a thought record. 
document the situations that trigger anxiety, the associated negative thoughts, and how you challenge and reframe those thoughts. Over time, review your progress, noting the changes in your thought patterns and the reduction in anxiety symptoms. This practice not only provides a structured approach to managing anxiety, but also promotes a sense of empowerment and control over one's emotional responses. The structured approach to cogn cognitive restructuring provides a tangible, actionable method to combat anxiety. Through understanding, challenging, and altering negative thought patterns, individuals can significantly reduce anxiety, promoting a more balanced, positive outlook on life. Next tool we have up is called exposure therapy, and like the other ones we've discussed so far, this is also part of CBT. And you may have noticed that a lot of tools come from cognitive behavioral therapy, and that makes sense because that's aimed a lot at depression, anxiety, and many other you know common mental um, mental health conditions. So, what exactly is exposure therapy? So, it's aimed at reducing fear and anxiety responses to specific triggers or situations. It's grounded in the principle of facing fears in a controlled, safe, and gradual manner, which over time helps to desensitize the fear response. This type of therapy is particularly effective for individuals dealing with phobias, social anxieties, and PTSD. The process involves creating a hierarchy of fears and gradually facing those fears, starting from the least anxiety-provoking situation to the most. It's a structured approach that encourages individuals to confront their fears head-on, head promoting mastery and desensitization over time. The gradual exposure helps to build confidence and resilience, empowering inv individuals to regain control over their fears and anxieties. So hierarchy of fears would be, let's say if you're scared of going on an airplane, um, so the scariest thing of course would be getting on the airplane itself. Uh, maybe the least provoking thing would be looking on a website about airplanes or maybe looking at an image of an airplane and then after that buying the ticket and then maybe after that just visiting an airport to be one thing after another that slowly leads up to actually getting on that airplane. So it should be one anxiety provoking situation that you conquer and then you expose yourself to another one that's a little more anxiety provoking and then you're able to conquer that and so on and so forth until you expose yourself to the thing that is the most anxiety provoking. But since it's a lead up, each one should be, you know, you should be a little more resilient than the last time so you should be able to cope a little bit better as well. So what does it do? Exposure therapy aims to reduce or eliminate the fear response associated with anxiety provoking situations. By repeatedly facing the feared object or situation in a controlled environment, the individual becomes less sensitive to the triggers, thereby reducing anxiety. Over time, the fear response to these triggers diminishes, leading to a significant reduction in anxiety and improved quality of life. How does it work? The therapy operates on the principle of habituation and extinction. Habituation occurs as the individual becomes accustomed to the anxiety-provoking situation through repeated exposure, leading to a decrease in anxiety. Extinction occurs when the conditioned fear response gradually diminishes over time, fostering a sense of safety and control in previously feared situations. Now let's discuss implementing this. So first we identify the fears. So list down the situations or objects that trigger anxiety ranking them from least to most anxiety provoking. And then we create an exposure hierarchy, so arrange the fears in a hierarchical order, creating a step-by-step -step plan for facing those fears. Next is gradual exposure, so starting with the least anxiety provoking situation and exposing yourself to it either in, Im in imagination or reality, um, reality being the best, progressing gradually to more anxiety provoking situations. Uh, make sure to practice regularly. Consistent practice is key to effectiveness of exposure hierarchy. Set aside time daily or weekly for exposure practice. Exercise. Um, engage in systematic desensitization by working through your exposure hierarchy. Begin with the least anxiety provoking scenario. Practicing relaxation techniques to manage anxiety symptoms. Gradually work your way up the hierarchy 
ensuring you feel comfortable with each stage before moving on to the next. So that means you might need to do one stage several times before moving on to the next one. Document your experiences, noting the level of anxiety felt and the progress made. Over time, you'll notice a decrease in anxiety levels when facing these situations, cultivating a sense of mastery and control over your fears. Mindfulness and relaxation techniques have been gaining a fair amount of popularity over the last few years. Uh, you've probably been hearing them quite a bit in terms of anxiety and really any type of, um, you know, any issues with mood, with depression, with anxiety, even with bipolar. Um, it's become pretty common to hear these. So uh, mindfulness and relaxation techniques are tools aimed at promoting a state of calm and present moment awareness. Mindfulness involves paying attention to the present moment without judgment, fostering a sense of acceptance and awareness. Relaxation techniques, on the other hand, focus on reducing physical tension and promoting a state of calm. Both mindfulness and relaxation are powerful tools for managing anxiety. They encourage a shift from a state of stress and worry to a state of acceptance and calm, providing a respite for the whirlpool of anxious thoughts and physical tension that often accompanies anxiety. So what does it do? These techniques help in grounding individuals, pulling them out of anxiety-inducing thought patterns. By focusing on the present moment from, relaxa from relaxing the body, one can break the cycle of anxiety, creating a space of calm and clarity. This not only reduces the immediate feelings of anxiety, but also promotes more balanced and centered approach to life. Now these work because mindfulness works by cultivating a non-judgmental awareness of the present moment, breaking the cycle of primitive thinking that fuels anxiety. Relaxation techniques work by releasing physical tension, which in turn helps to alleviate the mental tension associated with anxiety. Now let's discuss implementing this. So we want to practice mindfulness daily. So dedicate time each day to practicing mindfulness whether through meditation, mindful breathing, or mindful activities like walking or eating. And this is when you would just like notice your body, notice yourself, notice like the state of, the, of your thoughts. Uh, utilize relaxation techniques. So employ relaxation techniques such as progressive muscle relaxation, which, we'll note it, which I'll um, talk about a little later here. Uh, deep breathing, guided relaxation exercises, um, like some of the meditations I have on my channel here. And uh, of course, stay consistent. So consi consistency is key to experiencing the benefits of mindfulness and relaxation techniques. So uh, it's best to, to make them part of your daily routine. Um, a lot of people do this when they're feeling very anxious, but mindfulness and relaxation works best if it's daily practice. And it works best if it's, you know, like a uh, low to moderate level of anxiety, so that way it's able to stop that immediately. If you're already at a much higher level of anxiety, then they're still going to work, but not quite as effectively. This is better as like a consistent practice. So how do we do this? What's the exercise we'd like to set up for this? So it's best to set aside a specific time each day for your mindfulness and relaxation practice. Engage in a 10 minute mindfulness meditation, focusing on your breath, observing the inhalations and exhalations without judgment. Alternatively, practice progressive muscle relaxation, so that would be tensing and re relaxing every muscle group in your body. And just throughout the entire thing, just note how you're feeling. Uh, document your experiences, um, notice your anxiety levels, notice your thoughts without attaching to them, and after a while, you'll notice that you start to calm down, you become more present moment aware. So instead of like thinking of the future or the past, you'll be just thinking of the moment. And this will help, help a lot with anxiety management. Art therapy is one that some people might find childish at first, but if you've ever done it, you can find it can be actually quite powerful. So I, I do suggest it. It's a therapeutic approach that uses the creative process of making art to improve mental well-being. 
It provides a unique avenue for expression, allowing individuals to explore and communicate feelings that might be too difficult to articulate verbally. By engaging the creative process, individuals can un uncover emotions, develop self-awareness, and work through anxiety and other emotional challenges. This form of therapy does not require any artistic skill. It's not about, you know, drawing good or painting good. That, that doesn't matter at all. Uh, rather, it's the process of creation that holds therapeutic value. Art therapy can take many forms, so that can be drawing, painting, sculpting, uh, any other type of uh, visual art form. It's all about self-exploration, and um, you know that in itself promotes self-expression, emotional release, personal insight, and that will foster a sense of calm and understanding. So what does it do? Uh, art therapy provides a meditative escape allowing individuals to step outside their anxious thoughts and immerse themselves in the creative process. The act of creating art can divert attention away from anxiety and onto expression, offering a form of relief and relaxation. Additionally, it provides an avenue to explore and address the underlying issues contributing to anxiety, promoting an emotional healing um, avenue. So it works because therapeutic, the therapeutic value comes from the process of creating, expressing, and reflecting. As individuals engage in art and creation, they can experience a state of flow, which is a form of mindful immersion in an activity. The state of flow can help shift focus away from anxiety-provoking thoughts and instead promote relaxation and a sense of well-being. Now, implementation is honestly some of the easiest here. Uh, so choose a medium, and that could be honestly anything. So some of the, the easy ones to talk about are drawing, painting, sculpting. Uh, it could be a collage. It could be any, any form of visual art. Um, creating regularly is the best. So set aside time each day or each week to engage in art uh, therapy. Allow yourself to explore and express freely without judgment. It's honestly best if you just go with the flow of it, just allow yourself to make things. Don't even think about it too much. Just let yourself go with it. Remember, it's not about creating something good. It's not even about artistic skill. It's just about going with it. When you're finished, you want to reflect. So after each art therapy session, reflect on your artwork and any emotions or insights that emerge during the process. Be open to exploration. So allow yourself to explore different mediums and approaches. There's no right or wrong way to engage in art therapy. So the exercise of this is, I would say, engage at least weekly in art therapy. Uh, start with a simple prompt, such as drawing or painting your emotions or a specific anxiety-provoking situation. Allow yourself to freely create without judgment, letting your emotions to flow straight onto, you know, the paper, the canvas, whatever you're using. Uh, when you're done, reflect on your artwork noting any insights or emotional releases experienced. Over time, observe the impact of regular art therapy sessions on your anxiety levels and your overall mental well-being. Guided meditation and positive affirmations can also be very helpful for this. Both are tools designed to promote a calm mind and a positive outlook. Guided meditation, and you'll find many on my channel as well, leads individuals through a meditation process with the help of a guide, often fo focusing on relaxation, breath awareness, and calming imagery. On the other hand, positive affirmations are positive statements that individuals repeat to themselves, aimed at overcoming negative thoughts and fostering a positive mindset. Both of these tools can be incredibly beneficial for managing anxiety. They offer a structured approach to calming the mind, reducing stress, and promoting positive thinking, which in turn helps to alleviate anxiety symptoms. So guided meditation offers a structured pathway to relaxation and mindfulness, aiding in the reduction of anxiety. Positive affirmations, on the other hand, help to reframe negative thought patterns, promoting a more positive self-image and outlook on life. Together, they create a synergistic effect and they're able to help create a calm, positive, and balanced state of mind. So the way they work is that guided meditation is able to lead individuals in into a state of deep relaxation, 
often focusing on breath awareness and calming imagery, and these are able to soothe the mind. Positive affirmations work by challenging and altering negative thought patterns, replacing them with positive beliefs and attitudes. So implementing this, fairly easy enough, is you would first choose a guided meditation. Again, I have many here on my channel you can choose from. So select guided meditations that resonate with you and focus on relaxation and anxiety reduction. Uh, you'd want to practice it daily, so dedicate time each day to engage in guided meditation and to repeat positive affirmations. Uh, you can create personalized affirmations, so develop affirmations that resonate with you and address your specific anxieties or negative thought patterns. And as always, be consistent, so make sure that you do this regularly, at least, you know, at least daily, or if not that, at least once a week or every other day. Uh, me personally, I do it like after work, but um, you know, make sure that you do it at least somewhat regularly to uh, reap the rewards. So the exercise for this is to engage in regular practice of them and to choose a quiet time and space, uh, follow the guided meditation session, and then repeat your chosen affirmations aloud or in your mind. Document your experiences, and this will help you note the changes in your anxiety level. Over time, you'll start to notice how this helps to uh, create a more positive mindset, and it's going to help you manage your anxiety symptoms much better. We're now going to pivot over to a different type of theory known as acceptance and commitment therapy, or ACT, and here we're going to talk about diffusion techniques. So diffusion techniques focus on altering the way individuals interact with their thoughts, rather than changing the content of, their thought, of the thoughts themselves. Diffusion helps to create distance from troublesome thoughts, making them less impactful and reducing their ability to trigger anxiety. Diffusion promotes a shift from being entangled with distressing thoughts, and rather observing them in a detached manner. This shift is powerful as it helps individuals to see their thoughts for what they are, just thoughts, rather than absolute truths or commands that must be followed. So what does it do? Diffusion techniques help in reducing the believability and distressing impact of negative thoughts. By creating a space between the individual and their thoughts, diffusion aids in reducing the influence these thoughts have on emotional states, especially anxiety. So this works because diffusion operates by changing the way individuals relate to their thoughts. Instead of getting caught up in negative thought patterns, individuals learn to see their thoughts from a distance reducing their emotional charge and their ability to provoke anxiety. This can also be called metacognition, uh, which is kind of like thinking about thinking, so it helps to like bring you back from it. So even though it's still like you thinking, you start to notice that there's this whole other level of thinking where you can like pull back and like notice, okay, I have these thought patterns, why am I having this? So let's discuss the implementation of this. So first we identify the distressing thoughts. So, recognize the thoughts that trigger anxiety and distress. We then want to practice detachment. So, instead of engaging with the distressing thoughts, practice observing them as transient mental events. Uh, use mental, tech use uh, mental diffusion techniques. So, this could be labeling the thoughts, such as, I am having a thought that, you know, for an, I am having a, th a thought that I am anxious, I am having a thought that people are watching me, things like that or even visualizing those thoughts or as uh, leaves floating down a stream. So see yourself sitting at a stream. It's just nice, clear water. And every time a thought pops up, it's nothing more than a leaf going by in a stream. And as that leaf passes by, so does the thought. And that's, that's it. And of course you want to practice this regularly. So along with daily practice, uh, whenever a distressing thought arises, instead of getting entangled with it, just label a thought, such as again, I'm having a thought that I'm not good enough, or that people are watching me, or that I can't be, um, you know, I can't be good at anything, and then let it float away, just again like a leaf on a stream, and practice this regularly, daily, or as often as you can.
Next up is distress tolerance, and this comes from dialectical behavioral therapy, which is in a lot of ways is similar to ACT. So this focuses on building resilience towards the negative emotions and stressors. It's about learning to tolerate distress in a healthy way rather than avoiding or escaping it. Distress tolerance is crucial for individuals who experience intense bouts of anxiety, providing them with tools to manage distress rather than resorting to negative coping mechanisms. This skill promotes acceptance and tolerance of distressing situations, aiding in the development of resilience and a balanced response to stress. It's about facing discomfort and learning to navigate through it with a sense of composure and control. So what does it do? The stress tolerance provides a toolkit for managing distressing emotions and situations. By learning to tolerate the stress, individuals can prevent a spiral of negative emotions and behaviors promoting a balanced, controlled response to stress. Stress tolerance operates by teaching individuals skills to accept and tolerate the stress without judgment. These skills include distraction, self-soothing, and improving the moment, which help individuals navigate through distressing situations without exacerbating their anxiety. Now let's talk about implementation. So we first identify triggers. Uh, so we want to recognize situations or emotions that trigger the uh, anxiety or distress in general. Uh, start by practicing acceptance. Uh, work on accepting the reality of distressing situations without judgment. So that these things are happening, they are causing us distress, and we just have to accept that without judgment. We're distressed, we're anxious, this is just how it is and we have to accept that. We then want to start using our distress tolerance techniques. So employee uh, techniques such as distraction, self-soothing, improving the moment, and we'll get into that more in other videos because DBT can be uh, very detailed. But um, And of course we'd want to uh, practice this regularly, so we'd want to be consistent with doing this whenever we're noticing that coming up. So we'd want to engage in daily practice of it, and whenever we're faced with a distressing situation, Instead of reacting impulsively or avoiding the situation, we'd want to use those techniques to navigate through the uh, anxiety. The last skill we're going to talk about today is progressive muscle relaxation, also abbreviated to PMR. So this is a relaxation technique aimed at reducing muscle tension and promoting relaxation. Uh, it was developed by Dr. Edmund Jacobson in the early 20th century, and it's very easy to do. Uh, the technique involves systematically tensing and then relaxing different muscle groups in the body. This process not only helps in identifying where in the body one holds stress, but also aids in letting go of the physical tension that often accompanies anxiety. The practice encourages a uh, deepened state of relaxation, where individuals can become more attuned to bodily sensations and areas of tension. By progressively moving through different muscle groups, individuals can foster a state of relaxation and physical ease, which in turn promotes mental calmness. So what does it do? PMR alleviates anxiety by releasing muscle tension and promoting relaxation. It's a technique that provides immediate feedback on the state of one's physical tension and helps individuals learn how to distinguish between the feelings of a tensed muscle and a relaxed muscle. By systematically tensing and then relaxing each muscle group, individuals can release physical tension and enter a deeper state of relaxation. The practice also brings awareness to physical sensations, aiding in the recognition and release of muscle tension that may can be uh, contributing to anxiety. So it's best if we have a uh, quiet space to do this in. So choose like a quiet and comfortable space like a bedroom or anywhere else where you won't be disturbed. And then you do, you'll start systematic tensing, tensing and relaxation. Start with your feet and progress up to your head. And just tense each muscle group for 10 to 15 seconds and relax for 20 to 30. And when I say tense, I don't mean like tense to a point where your muscles are shaking and you're like putting all your strength behind it. Just instead tense to a point where you feel your muscles like getting a little harder but so about like halfway, maybe 60% of your strength, and then relax them for 20 to 30 seconds. You don't want to hurt yourself, you just want to have them tense up a little bit. Uh, 
focus on sensations, so pay attention to the sensations experienced during both the tensing and relaxing phases. You'll want to set aside 15 to 20 minutes daily to practice this. As you tense and relax each muscle group, observe the sensations of tension and release. Over time, you'll become more adept at identifying and releasing muscle tension, promoting a state of relaxation and reduced anxiety. Many people do notice that as they do this more often, they're able to release that tension much more, um, much more easily, and they're able to identify much more quickly which muscle groups uh, have tension. So um, the more you do it, honestly, the better you do become at this. Uh, it's a daily practice that can easily be integrated into any routine. It does not take long to do, and it's great for anyone that has any type of uh, tension from anxiety, which is pretty common. Uh, many people feel like that muscle tension in their backs, their arms, jaws, necks, stomach, legs, many uh, you know major muscle groups like that. To bring us to the um, end where we're able to conclude and reflect on everything. So the realm of therapy offers a wide array of techniques and skills aimed at managing and reducing anxiety. Each technique, whether it's cognitive restructuring, exposure therapy, mindfulness and relaxation techniques, art therapy, guided meditation, positive affirmations, diffusion techniques, distress tolerance, or progressive muscle relaxation, all of which you just learned about, provides a unique pathway towards alleviating anxiety and promoting mental well-being. Implementing these techniques requires a commitment to self-awareness, practice, and consistency. The exercises associated with each technique offer practical approaches to integrating these skills in a daily life, fostering a sense of control and mastery over anxiety. Reflecting on the variety of techniques available, you'll find that you have an opportunity to explore and find which one of these resonates most with you. It's best to try all of them, but you might find at least one or two that really throughout this have resonated with you that you'd want to try. Uh, remember, it's a journey of self-discovery and empowerment. Each step taken towards managing anxiety pays the way towards enhanced mental well-being and a better quality of life. Through exploring these techniques, individuals can develop a personalized toolkit for managing anxiety promoting a sense of balance, resilience, and overall mental wellness. Alright, so how are you feeling now? Which one of these techniques do you want to try out? Let me know. Comment below, visit me at paulwellness.com, and stick around because I'll be having more videos like this soon. Alright, take care. Bye.